All right, here we go. Uh, inclined planes with some friction. All right, so honestly, once again, as has been the case most of this chapter, not a ton that's new here. Uh, we're basically just going to do harder versions of the same problems. All right, so here we go. Um, so uh, here we've got a box that is sliding at six and a half meters a second, and it begins going up a ramp that is inclined at 25 degrees. And as usual, that's you know off of the horizontal, above the horizontal. All right, uh, coefficients, of, coefficients of static and kinetic friction are 0.5 and 0.4. Question A wants to know how far the box will slide up the ramp before it stops. All right, so start by making your free body diagram. Pew, pew, pew. We know that this angle here is, uh, ba, 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 go brain, 25 degrees. There we go. Okay. So um, in a previous video, we talked about how to find your uh, the components, right? So what we're going to have here is we're going to have a perpendicular component of gravity that is going to equal to the weight, so negative mg times what? The cosine of 25 degrees. Okay, that means your normal force is going to be the same thing. I guess, but opposite sign, right? Um, let's see. Uh, you're going to have a parallel component of gravity pulling this guy down the ramp. Let's make ourselves a little more room here. Oh, not what I wanted to do. There we go. Okay, so let's see. Our FG parallel, our, oh my gosh. Fg parallel is the weight, so negative mg, but this time it's times the sine of 25 degrees, right? Now, because the block is sliding up the ramp at a velocity initially of 6.5 meters a second, that means friction is going to try to stop this thing, right? So we're going to have kinetic friction, which is going to be equal to our coefficient of kinetic friction, times our normal force, which is just this guy, right? So that's uh, negative 0 0.4 mg cosine 25, right? Okay, so hopefully you can read all the scribbles here. Um, so that means then, if I use this, if I do net force equals net force, we find that the mass of the block times the acceleration of the block is, well, our net force is just Fg parallel plus uh, force of kinetic friction, right? So we get Ma equals, let's see, Fg parallel is negative Mg sine 25. Force of kinetic friction is 0 0.4, negative 0.4, Mg cosine 25. Divide everything by M and then simplify it, right? So these are all the numbers we know. So 9.8 times sine of 25, 0.4 times 9.8 times sine of 25, uh, and it gives you negative 7.69 meters per second squared as an acceleration. And so now we know our initial velocity is 6.5 meters a second. We know our uh, final velocity. We're trying to find how far it goes before it stops. So we can find our displacement by using our v of squared minus vi squared equation. And if you do that, you get 2.75 meters. Okay. So I think the only thing that was new here was that we didn't know the mass. Um, and so we had to write everything in terms of mass and then cancel it all out, right? Okay. So question B wants to know if it'll slide back down. Hmm. All right. If so, how long will it take? If not, how much steeper would the ramp have to be to make it slide down? So let's see. So where we're at now is this. We've got our ramp. We've got our, this is our part B. So we've got Fg parallel is negative mg cosine theta. Nope, sine theta, sorry, my bad. Sine theta, oh, which I guess we know the angle, right? So we can put in 25 degrees. I'll get this right one of these times, all right? Um, we still know our, let me get rid of this. This is not doing me any good anymore. Oops. Um, we still know our normal force is still going to be this dude, right? So that means what's going to try to prevent this thing from moving is our force of static friction, right? 
maybe if there's enough, I probably shouldn't have even drawn it. All right, so let's find out what our maximum force of static friction is. So our force, our said, our force of friction static max is our coefficient of friction times our normal force. So if you simplify this, ooh, we got to actually do some a uh, little bit of math here, I guess. So let's see. So if you simplify this, this ends up giving you um, 0.453 mg. Okay, so that's our force of static friction max. Similarly, if you've simplified this, it ends up giving you 0.423 mg. Okay, and so we can see that the force of static friction that's available to us, 0.453, is bigger than the 0.423 mg. Okay, so it doesn't look like this thing's going to slide down the hill, does it? All right, so the question is, how steep would it have had to have been to make it slide back down? All right, so... Be continued. Oh, to be continued. Huh, that's funny. Uh, except it's never mind. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So we've got a ramp. We've got our angle. Let's make our free body diagram. So let's see. So we're going to have Fg perpendicular is negative mg cosine of theta. We're going to have a normal force that's equivalent to that, positive mg times the cosine of theta. You're going to have a parallel component of gravity pulling this guy down the hill. That depends on the sine of the angle, right? And we want it to slide back down, which means that we want this guy here to be bigger than whatever our static friction max is, right? And that static friction max is this times our coefficient of friction, which is 0.5. Right? So to slide down, we need the magnitude of this force to be bigger than the magnitude of this force, right? So we need, I'm going to write this, the magnitude of Fg parallel to be greater than the magnitude of our static friction max. Okay, if you've never seen this notation, these absolute value bars, when you're talking about a vector, it just means the magnitude of the vector. Okay? Um, equivalently, to, the other way to do it is, I guess, technically, this is the vector. This is the magnitude of the vector. So, all right. Um, but that, this, those absolute value bars just call attention to it. So, long story short, to get it to slide down, we need mg sine theta to be bigger than 0.5 mg cosine theta. So dividing both sides by mg, make sure that I haven't made a wrong turn here. Okay, good. So divide both sides by mg. So now I've got sine of theta is greater than 0.5 cosine theta. Let's divide both sides by cosine theta. Now I've got sine of theta over cosine of theta. This is a really common trick, you guys, is greater than 0 0.5. But notice, sine of theta over cosine theta is tangent theta. And that is greater than 0 0.5. So now I just take the inverse tangent of both sides and discover that tangent, or the, the angle, excuse me, is 26.6 degrees. All right, so once again, as was the case with forces at weird angles, if you've got surfaces at weird angles, you very frequently need to write the values of your forces in kind of generic terms using variables, and then just learn to manipulate those variables. All right, so that is that.